Today we're going to be reviewing graphing in slope-intercept form as we prepare to start learning how to solve systems of equations using the graphing method. The first thing we want to remember about graphing in slope-intercept form is the formula for slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. In that formula, b is our y-intercept point. Remember, that's the point where the line crosses the y-axis. We also need to know about m, which is our slope. You want to remember that m, our slope, stands for our rise over the run. Let's look at an example. Remember, our slope-intercept formula is y equals mx plus b. In this case, b is negative 4. That means we're going to put our starting point on the y-axis at negative 4. m in this formula is 1 third. Remember, if we're thinking about slope as rise over run, since both 1 and 3 are positive, we're going to be going up 1, right 3, and putting another point. We can keep doing that up 1, right 3, and creating more points for our line. I can then connect those points and create the equation of the line. All right, let's take a look at another example. In this case, our equation is y equals negative 2x plus 5. In this case, our y-intercept point is 5. Our slope is negative 2. Reminder that if our slope is a whole number, and we'd like to think about it as a fraction, so we can think about it in terms of rise over run, we can always take that whole number and put it over 1. We now have a rise of negative 2 and a run of positive 1. B is our y-intercept point on the y-axis. It's a positive 5, so that's going to be up here. From there, our slope says we're going to rise negative 2. Even though the term is rise, we're really going to move down 2 and to the right 1 to create our new points. Down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, and now I've got a set of points that I can connect. Okay, let's take a look at a third example because this one's got a special situation. Our equation is y equals negative x minus 4. Another way of thinking about this is y equals negative 1x minus 4. And sometimes that helps us to really realize what the slope is going to be. Our b, our y-intercept point, is negative 4 which means our starting point on the y-axis is going to be down here at negative 4. Okay, our slope then is negative 1, which if you remember from the last example, means we can make it look like a rise over run by simply putting our negative 1 over 1. So our slope will be negative 1 over 1, meaning we're going to go down 1, right 1, to put another point on the graph. Down 1, right 1 down one, right one. And now let's draw our line. Remember, you should be using a straight edge to draw your line on your coordinate plane. Okay, now that we have reviewed how to graph an equation in slope-intercept form, let's talk about using graphing to solve a system of equations. You might be wondering, well, what is a system of equations? Well, a system of equations is simply a set of equations that are using the same variables. Then you might be wondering, well, what's the solution for a system of equations? The solution to a system of equations is a set of values that satisfies both the equations in the system. Quite simply, it's the point where the two lines will intersect. Let's talk about the steps for how to solve a system of equations using graphing. Please write these steps in your math notebook. Step 1. Get both of your equations into slope-intercept form. 
Remember, that looks like y equals mx plus b, if they are not already in that form. Step 2. Graph each equation on the same coordinate plane. That means you're going to have two lines on the same graph. Step 3. Write your solution, which is going to be the point of intersection where the lines cross one another, as an ordered pair. Remember, an ordered pair is the two numbers separated by a comma and surrounded by parentheses. Let's take a look at how to graph a system of equations. Okay, I've got two linear equations here. They're both already in slope-intercept form. Awesome. I have uh, written them in two different colors, and I'll graph them in two different colors so that we can see the difference between the two. My first equation that's in black is up here, and I can see that B, my starting point, is negative 2. I can also tell that my slope is negative 1, and remember, if I want to write that as a fraction, which I always do, I'm going to write that as negative 1 over 1. My starting point was negative 2, so I'm going to graph a point at negative 2 on the y-axis. From there, I'm going to be going down 1, right 1, to create new points. Okay, I think I'll hold off and draw my lines in in a little bit but I'm going to take a look at my second equation. My second equation is y equals 4x plus 3. Now in that equation, b, my starting point, is at positive 3, and my slope is 4. Again, if I want to write that as a fraction, which I do, I'm going to make that 4 over 1. Okay, if I go to the y-axis for my b, my starting point, it's at positive 3, so that's up here. From there, my slope is rise 4, run 1. So that means up 4, right 1. Now, I always like to make sure that I've got at least three points to connect so I can make sure that my um, linear equation is graphed as accurately as possible. But if I try to go up 4, right 1 one more time, I'm actually off my graph, so I'm kind of guessing, and I don't want to do that. So please remember that 4 over 1 is going to be the same as negative 4 over negative 1. So if I go back to my starting point at 3 on the y-axis, from here I can go down 4, left 1, and put point. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my straight edge and graph my lines. Okay, now that my lines are graphed, I can see that the black line and the red line intersect right around here. If I look at what that ordered pair is, I will be able to tell that it is at negative 1, negative 1. So I'm going to write my solution as an ordered pair, negative 1, negative 1. Now remember we said that the solution to a system of equations is a set of values that satisfies both equations. So I can check to make sure that the ordered pair negative 1, negative 1 works in both of my uh, equations in the system. So since both my x and my y value in the solution ordered pair are negative 1, I'm going to put negative 1 into the um, equation for both y and for x. That means I'm going to check to see if negative 1 is equal to, I'm going to read this as negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1 because of the negative in front of the x, and then another negative 1 because our x value is negative 1 minus 2. Well, negative 1 times negative 1 gives me 1 minus 2. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So since negative 1 is equal to negative 1, it checks out in the first equation. Now let's check if it works in the second equation. Okay, in place of y, I'm again going to put in negative 1 equals 4 times my x value, which is also negative 1, plus 3. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 and negative 4 plus 3 
is negative 1. So my ordered pair checks out in my second solution as well.